Hey everybody, Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved, and I call this one a, uh, a centripetal force carnival ride. And this problem is a very common problem. You'll see it in every physics textbook uh, there is, and it's kind of a fun problem. I really like it. Um, we have a carnival ride, which consists of a circular cylinder of radius 2 meters. Riders stand inside the inside surface of the cylinder, which spins very fast to make them feel pinned against the wall. Uh, if the ride makes one rotation every 0 0.900 seconds, what minimum coefficient of static friction between the rider and the inside surface is required to keep the rider safely against the wall when the floor drops out of the ride? So, um, uh, so anyway, I got this problem from one of my uh, tutoring clients. So uh, check in the, the show notes for a link if you if you'd like uh, some physics tutoring. And um, uh, yeah, so let's now also I encourage you uh, try to do the problem uh, on your own um, before you watch the rest of the video. And also check this out. These are things that you should be familiar with. Newton's second law, um, friction, how to deal with friction. Uh, centripetal force and centripetal acceleration, and you know what do we mean by the period uh, of rotation? So, um, if you're totally unfamiliar with these things, you're probably not ready for this yet. But um, the rest of you, you know, let's uh, let's get going. So, given now uh, the way this works, we've got a like it's like a big barrel or something, big cylinder. So let's draw a picture of it. And I actually went on a ride like this a long time ago out of some fairground. And um, and it's kind of cool. You, you you walk into this this thing. It's got a little door in it and people walk in and then you you stand on the side of this. So let's let's show somebody, you know, standing st standing right there. They're standing on the floor. And <clears throat> And there is a floor in here, right? And so all these people are saying, then that spins around and you feel as if you're getting pinned against the wall. You're feeling a centripetal acceleration. Well, it's centrifugal versus centripetal. Um, but you feel as if you're getting pressed back against the wall. That's the centrifugal force. But what's really happening is, is that you have to be accelerated as you go around in a circle and you're going to feel that that centripetal force pushing you towards the center okay and it was given that this has a radius of two meters and it makes uh it rotates around once every 0.9 seconds now we call that the period and i'll use a capital t for period. Period is, is a measurement of time. And it's the time it takes to go around one complete circle. Okay. And what are we trying to find? Uh, we're trying to find the coefficient of not, not kinetic friction. We're trying to find the coefficient of static friction that's going to hold them uh, in place so that when the floor drops out, you don't slip out of the ride and die. So, you know, let's save a life here with this problem. So, um, let me zoom out a little. All right. So, we're trying to find the coefficient of static friction. And we know we have an equation for that, right? We know that the force of static friction is really. Um, greater or less than or equal to the static coefficient of friction times the normal force. Well, we can solve this for the coefficient of friction. This is the maximum um, friction. And actually what we're trying to do is find what, what is the minimum one uh, coefficient of static friction that we need. Uh, and so, and then we're going to have the normal force here. So this kind of tells us what to do. You know, uh, the coefficient of static friction is the force of friction. So that means I need to figure out what this force of friction is. And I need to figure out what the normal force is. 
So since I need to figure out what forces are acting on an object that's accelerating, let's draw a free body diagram. And I'm just going to take this stick figure person and make them a dot. Okay. Now this person is being uh, swung around in a circle, but gravity is still pulling them down, right? Okay. Now, here's where our students get really hung up on this problem. What for, I mean, if you drop this floor out and the surface is too slippery, you're going to slide down, aren't you? This person's going to slide down. Well, as they slide down, there's friction between their back, um, the person's back, and this, this the wall of this drum that they're in. And it's a force of friction acting on them. And it's really this force of friction that is supporting their weight. If, if we have enough, co if the static coefficient of friction is adequate, this force of friction will support the weight of the person. Now, what force is keeping them, uh, well, what force is making them go in a circle? I mean, if, you, if this person is moving around and around and around, you need a centripetal force to make objects move in a circle. And really, it's the force between this person's back and the wall. Two surfaces pressed together. We have a name for two surfaces pressed together. We call that the normal force. So if I draw a free body diagram of the person in this position, here's my normal force. Okay. Now let's just make this the x direction and this the y direction. All forces are aligned with our axis. And so now I can um, use Newton's second law to, to figure out what these forces are. Let's sum the forces in the y direction first, equals ma in the y direction. Well, I'm going to add up all the forces in the y direction. So there's only two of them, right? This friction force and this weight. And so we can say, well, the force of friction minus the weight, because it's in the negative. This minus is because it's it's down, right? And then uh, this is equal to, then ask yourself, well, what is the um, acceleration in the y direction? Well, <laughs> you don't want an acceleration in the y direction. If the, probably if this person's going to accelerate in the y direction, it's, it's going to be because he or she is slipping out of this ride. Uh, and that's not good. <laughs> you don't want, so you don't want any acceleration in the y direction. So we're going to say that that's zero. Oh, and so what this means is kind of obvious. This force of friction just is supporting the weight of the person. It's equal to mg. So this is kind of important here. And that's what we're going to put in there. And this is static friction, right? There's no sliding between the the surface of the, this person's back and the wall. We don't want any sliding, so it's going to be static friction. Now we got to figure out what this normal force is. So to do that, I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction. Well, there's only one force, and that's this normal force. It's equal to m. I don't know what mass is, and um, but it's, it's going to cancel out, you'll see. But then I ask myself, okay, acceleration. What do we know about the acceleration of this person? Well, this person is moving with a, um, <coughs> you know, well, once the ride gets started and it reaches its maximum speed, and it's just going to stay at that speed. We're moving with a constant speed. So the acceleration is not going to change our speed. It is going to change the direction of the velocity vector of this person. It's, it's going to push them towards the center. That's what a centripetal force does. So therefore, we have a centripetal acceleration. And you should know that centripetal acceleration, you know, A sub C, is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle that you're traveling in. So I'm going to just say this is V squared over R. Okay. So now I've got an expression for the force of friction and the normal force, but 
And what do I know? I don't know the mass, but I can see when I make this ratio, the mass is going to cancel. I know what G is. I know what R is, but I don't know what the speed is. Now, this is how I handle this. This person is moving in a circle, right? And speed, I'll put it down here. Speed is, right, the distance traveled divided by the time it took to travel that distance. Well, if you're moving in a circle once, what distance did you travel? Well, that's the circumference of a circle. 2 pi r. That's the distance. And the time it takes to go around once, we call that the period. And the period is given to be 0.9 seconds. All right. So uh, let's plug in our values. Now, you could, you could take this expression, plug it in here, square everything, and then do everything all at once. But I have found it, uh, usually it's a little bit easier, uh, especially for beginners on this kind of stuff, to just figure out what the speed is directly. So let's do that. That's 2 pi times the radius was given to be 2 meters, and the time to make one lap around, or one circle, one complete circle, is 0 0.900 seconds. And this gives me a speed, when you plug this in your calculator, of 13.96. I'll carry a little bit of extra significant figures for now. So, so now I've got um, a, a speed squared. Okay, so now I can, uh, well, let's figure out what uh, the coefficient of friction is now. Now I can go to my static coefficient of friction. And... Uh, and so that's equal to the force of friction, and the force of friction is just the weight of the object, mg. And then this is mv squared over r, r. Okay, so m cancels, right? And I get rg over v squared. That's, this is my coefficient of friction now. Do I know what R is? Yes. Do I know what G is? Yes. Do I know what B is? Yes. I calculated it over here. So now we're ready to, to get to our answer. And so our, our radius is 2.00 meters. This is 9.80 meters per second squared. And then velocity is 13.96 meters per second. But we got to square that. Now let's check units here. Meters times meters is meters squared per second squared. And then this is, is meters per second squared. So all the units cancel out, right? But that's what we want. The coefficient of friction is dimensionless. Look, the coefficient of friction is defined to be a force divided by a force. So a Newton divided by a Newton is dimensionless. The Newtons cancel out. All the units cancel out. Um, and when you plug all that in, you get our answer for the static coefficient of friction is 0 0.10. Um, and uh, I guess I'll add a zero there. It's one tenth. So, so there you go. And uh, problem solved. Um, now, there is this very a problem that's kind of similar to this one. And I made a video about it just a, a few days ago. But it's a car, and the car is um, moving around in a circle. So let's say you've got a car that's moving in a circle. And here's my car, and maybe it's, its velocity vector is coming, so it's, it's doing this. But if I draw a free body diagram of this car, you get, uh, well, you get the gravity, you get normal force, supporting that gravity and you get the friction force. So so you would solve this problem in a very similar way as the one we just did, but let's compare these two free body diagrams. For, for, for this guy in the drum here that's spinning around, it's the normal force that is our centripetal force, but this car on a flat, you know, uh, you know parking lot or something that's driving in circles, 
the it's the force of friction between the tires and, and the road that is the uh, uh, that is the centripetal force. So um, it's very similar free body diagrams, but very different. The normal force is supporting the weight in this case. Over here, it's the friction force that's supporting your weight. So they you'll quite often see these problems uh, match together. You'll see them in the same unit, same homework. So anyway, well, I hope this uh, I hope this made sense to you. And if it did, uh, please give my uh, uh, this video a thumbs up. It helps. It does help other people find it. And um, and if you're a physics student, uh, subscribe to my channel. Every few days, I put out a new video. And if you leave in the comments, if you have a question, I'll get to it. And uh, if you have a problem that you would like me to solve, leave that in the comments. Just type it out and maybe I'll make a video out of it. Um, for sure I will. For sure I will. Okay, because I don't get a lot of comments. I want to see more comments in there. Anyway, thanks for uh, listening and good luck in your physics studies. And may the net force be with you.